We are Gonzalo, is my name. Sebastián. Ricardo. Uh -huh. We are from Argentina. Sorry, my English is really very bad. Uh, but it's funny. <laughs> Then I use some notes to help me. Okay. We will be talking about uh, physically toys. It's a, a, a set of tools that we made to use a robot with e toys in uh, the first uh, years of schools, yes, primary schools. Um, we think that um, robotics are a, a good tool to work for different reasons. If the presentations begin to start <laughs> to start to work, let me see. Uh, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, we have some problems with the resolution, but we can move the presentation. It's not the famous tool we can made <laughs> some. Okay, why we should teach robotics at school? No? Uh, Jacques Delors, a French pedagogue, said that we can't accumulate a stock of knowledge to come back to it later without limits. Knowledge in, in this moment, in the present, is incredibly dynamic. Then the student should be able to update this knowledge and reach this first knowledge base. No? And They need to interact actively with the universe around him. He shouldn't be a passive actor of the universe. Then we must teach our students to be inquisitive. We need to be uh, to, to make inquisitive students. Then why robotics? How do we include technology education? Alan Kay said. It's not enough to install computers, no? Uh, it's only a... Um, uh, nothing really happened. Yes, it's, not, it's only a distraction. We believe that something is happening, but when nothing is really happened, no? We have a lot of computers, and we do the same things that we do with the blackboard, with the chuck, yes? We must create a learning environment. Hmm? And the question is, uh, what is a learning environment? Well, a learning environment is a, a place that uh, is one of a, a high challenge to the students with low stress, with individualized learning, hmm, and with a high motivation, with a significant, sorry, significant teamwork. In the last years, we put our children in the matrix. I want to see you this cartoon. It's a, an Argentinian cartoonist. Uh, do you know uh, Modern Times, the Chaplin yes, uh, movie? Here is Modern Tops, or Spinning Tops. No? It says... Uh, The top, thousands of years entertaining children around the world. And we can see the Nintendo top. <laughs> no? Then we, we lose a, a, a lot of uh, cognitive uh, reach using only digital technology. The technology education is digital, the games are digital. Digital is cheap, tidy, versatile, small, but really is poor. We need another things to work with our students. Then we propose incorporate physical technology in education. Why we want to incorporate physical technology? First, we think that the students develop meaningful things with physical uh, tools. No? The artifacts that they build are similar to ones in the real world. No? Another point is the motor skills, the fine motor skills, particularly, yes. Uh, the cooperative learning, in a, uh, w when we work with robots, 
the children need to work in a team because there are programmers, builders, and, and the three D perception is different. The digital three D perception than the real three D perception. Well, then one kind of physical technology is robotics. No? Why robotics then? Sorry. Well, we can work in a team with coordinate roles, specific roles. They can make uh, artifacts related with scientific and uh, artistic uh, disciplines. They can represent the knowledge and the real world in its construction, his constructions, and they can simulate some uh, problems of the real world with robotics. Well, we need to make a hardware platform to robots, to, uh, to make robots in the class, and we need a programming platform to the robot. Then we use a lot of uh, hardware platforms that are in the market, yes? Uh, like, uh, we will see them. And we made a programming platform to use these robots. This programming platform is defiant, is inexpensive, intuitive, open source, simple and powerful, then we use e toys to work with these hardware platforms. No? Good. What's physical e toys then? It's a framework to programming physical objects from e toys or a squeak or Faro now. It's cross platform. It works in Linux, Windows, Sugar, Mac, OS, <laughs> so so. It's open source because it's e toys. And we can work with several kinds of robots and physical interfaces in the class. Hardware platforms that we use in physical e toys, uh, all the robots of Wowi, Femi Sapiens, Robo Sapiens, Freebot, Roboquad, uh, and Robio. Yes, Lego Mindsomes and Lego Next, and Control Lab, Lego tools for educational robotics, Isobot, FIRA Robot Soccer Simulator, some kind of differential robot that we can control with the parallel port or serial port, and a Wiimote, the Wiimote joystick. And the last Arduino, well, now we, we will see Arduino and Lego Next uh, in eToys and in Faro. Sebastian we present uh, Lego Next and Arduino, and we change again. again. <laughs> Well, um, I am going to show how a child can program a physical robot. Um, we are going to see uh, the NXT, and we are going to start a new project. This is the um, overview of the Physical Toys uh, platform. And well, uh, this robot is a Lego NXT and um, um, it has uh, two um, uh, motors and the brick which is the computer and also it has some parts such as wheels and other sensors 
sound sensor and, and ultrasonic sensor. So I will go to the object catalog and then in a new category of physical toys I will uh, search the NXT brick. This morph represents the real object, the object. And now we are going to uh, connect it in a port that the OS um, specify. We are using we are using Bluetooth to connect the computer with the Lego robot. Okay, so Perfect. make a sound, which is uh, which means that it it is connected. And then when a child, um, uh, we are going to make a robot uh, that uh, reacts uh, to sound. So well, if it, if, it, if it reacts, well, I think that it uh, has to be a motor. And I will connect the motor in port yeah, number A. And also, because I want it to move forward, uh, I will connect another mod motor in port C. Here the motors are connected to port E and C, okay? It's the same thing. And then I want it to react to sound, so I will select a uh, NXT sound sensor. It is connected to, I think, port number one. Port number one, yes. Yeah. Now we can open its viewer and we will see that there are values that are changing. That's why I am speaking. Here is the sound sensor. See. Uh, uh. Okay. You see? Well, now I will make a little script. I will make a little script. I will put the uh, uh, test, condi uh, test condition. It's not only a presentation. We we have a, uh, we can fail. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say that if the value of the NXT sound sensor is less than more than yes, uh, more than 70 the motors will be turned on yeah. I will put um, 100 of speed and then 100 for the other motor. And if we not, think that it's easy. And if not, to it will break. And the other motor also. Okay. Can you put it on the floor? Because I it's <laughs> ah ah okay. <laughs> Where is the road? I, I can see. What? Okay. That's the problem mm. of uh, can fail. working with no, no. real things. <laughs> uh, next, I will turn on the script, and if everything is working correctly, the robot will move. Go! <laughs> Stop! Stop! Again, go! Have one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Come back, come back. <laughs> we can change the values on the fly. <laughs>
reach is change the motor values. Well, okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, now Richie, can you? Well, very little time, but I will try to show that um, what we did, uh, what I'm going to show you now is um, the core classes we developed underneath uh, um, the eToys interface. So what is fun is that these classes do not only work in eToys or in Squeak, that they also show, they also work on Faro. So I'm going to use, with I didn't expect, but it works. It seems Faro is not that different from Squeak. Stefan, uh, it works on Faro. Hey, I'm close <laughs> to this. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> so, uh, very quickly, I will show you the Faro image, which has our tools. Uh, I'm going to use for this. Uh, oh, this is ugly. Well. All the hardware platforms work on Itoy, Squeak, and Faro. And Mac, Linux. Well, some parts of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not all. He said uh, me yesterday. <laughs> I told you that I was going to do it. That <laughs> Not that it's done already. But well, uh, I'm going to minimize this. I'm, I'm starting a new project. I'm changing. Yes. Okay. Um, let's open a workspace. What I'm going to do now is show you the Arduino. Uh, class. This is the Arduino platform, yes. It's a, a famous hardware platform to make uh, robotics. Well, what we need now is to create an instance of Arduino. We do it very easily. Um, now we tell the Arduino to connect. Oh. What do you want to use? What do I want to use? What? Motor? Un potenciómetro. Ok. Cuatro. I will connect. This is how you actually talk to the Arduino. I, I, can, I can ask the Arduino for a digital pin. Maybe... ¿Qué tiene conectado? Analogic. No. Bueno, analog. Analog. One. The potenciómetro. And I can ask the analog pin value, value. It's, it's take, it takes a while because the, the machine is a little... Okay, I put in the other side. A ver. Ah, well, I have to... Declare? No, set input, creo que es. Now, the easy way to you do this uh, is to create a potentiometer that uh, ask him for the value of the, of the pin because it already configures the potentiometer correctly. I forgot that. <laughs> um, the intelligence is taking a while to, to load. Out of, okay. Creamos un nuevo potenciómetro. Eh, we create a new potentiometer. And we say the potentiometer attach to pin 1. Arduino. Which one? Uh, yes. No pin 1. So if this works, and now we can ask the potentiometer value, which is 0. Okay. And uh, on the other side. Okay, I, I move the potentiometer and then we have two values. So we can make a simple script to show. Repeat and fork. No. Ah. Fork. <laughs> Google? So if you move it. You can see, okay, the value of the potentiometer. And now I will very quickly, or maybe I can 
use the uh, what I really already bro uh, brought. Vamos a We're going to disconnect this instance, and I'm going to use the other one <laughs> because it's already written and I don't have it enough time. Um, Servo. On the pin 12. Okay. Yes. And now it's connected. We have everything working. The uh, potentiometer is there. And now... The potentiometer is in one. No? Okay. Yes. Test the servo. Ah. Yes, I should do that. Where do you connect it? El servo. El 12. El 12. Bien. Wait a minute. Yes. It's connected. Change. True. What, pa what happened? Mm. It should work, but it seems. It works most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going. To, I'm showing Faro. Change and go. No, it's on the other side. Ah, uh, yeah. uh huh. Yeah. Ah, okay. It was. Okay, okay. Works. <laughs> Now I can say maybe 90 degrees. Okay. Can you see? You can okay. see very bad moves. It works, believe me. <laughs> if you if you yeah. apply it correctly. <laughs> okay, okay. <Yeah. laughs> There is no mark to. Now uh, we will make the potentiometer. Can you attach the potentiometer with the motor? And now, claro. <coughs> we'll make this process. Well, I have only two hands. Okay. Yes. Hold okay. It. Now yes. it works. Very easily with the potentiometer. You can see in the transcript the potentiometer value, and it gets it. It is used to move the servo. It's quite simple actually. Uh, so what I wanted to show you that is that we made these, these classes uh, that represent the the actual objects, so that you can work very easily with the with the, f the framework. Let's say, um, and you're not uh, attached to eToys. You can use it in all the other platforms that. Squeak, Faro, uh, for your projects. So that's kind of it. Uh, I already have a, a Squeak next example, which is essentially the same. What? I'm not used to Faro, so I don't know what happened now. <laughs> <laughs> It's Faro problem, no physically <laughs> toys. No? But yeah, uh, the Lego next is actually the same. You have a Lego next instance, a motor instance, a port instance, uh, port classes. It's uh, very simple. So that's it. Okay. Yes, I will do. Thank you very much. Do you have questions? We will show all the things work correctly uh, afternoon in the innovation technology, innovation technology hours. Okay. Quieres usar ese? Okay, here we go. Um, so. Thanks. Uh, very cool. Um, you mentioned that some things are not working yes. in some places. Could you just briefly wrap up what is not working and where? Yes. Well, uh, in e -toy, in physical e toys, we have physical e toys working completely in Windows. Uh, in Linux, we have uh, well, in, in Ubuntu, we have we only tested uh, working the the next. Uh, the Lego Next with some magic terminal uh, commands. And uh, the Arduino was working. Uh, the Wobble Robots? No, the Wobble Robots, no. <laughs> It's with, it, it, yes, with the Lego Sail Tower? No. No? I no. believe. No. <laughs> we'll well, but uh, it's kind of, in Linux we have to work a little to, to make it work. In, in Faro, uh, these are the things that work uh, best because uh, we are only using the serial port uh, class for connecting to these uh, robots. And for the Wiimote, we use FFI, so I believe it wor would work too. I don't know the state of FFI in Faro. Uh, 
Mac, the, the problem with the Mac is that I, we don't have a Mac. <laughs> so it will be. If, if you have one to us, really. The other, the other day, some, someone sent an email to the Squeak developers uh, to tell you, to tell us that uh, physical toys was working for the Arduino on Mac. Uh, I didn't have time to uh, reply, but uh, it should work if you use the serial, serial, serial DC, if the Mac uh, VM use the serial ports, it should work. Yes. Okay. So, any question? Another question? So, did, did you... So, you see, for example, I would like to buy uh, a kit. Do you have something, do you have a web page where I could said I could go and you said, okay, that's the kit for Ardino, where I, you have, uh, so you have two questions, in fact. How can we make sure that people can buy this stuff? You go there, you said, okay, you have this PayPal account uh, or something like that, because for me, I don't know exactly if I should buy two of these and three of those. And then the second question that I have is that, do you have exercises? Because what I would like, I, I would like to present that to the math teacher I am in contact with the head of the maths teacher of the Academy de Lille, and I'm really looking for resources like that. And the next step, this is that if you give those kinds of things to the um, to the teacher, I would like to have, okay, here this is the exercise one, you do that, exercise two. Well, so you do you have resources uh, like Our that? next project is uh, make a curriculum to work with this. Uh, I want to... Uh, uh, to demonstrate that it's really uh, good work with robots in the classroom. There, are, there is no uh, any research about this, this uh, point. Uh, um, and if, if, if we, we want that the governments buy robots to work in class, we need to demonstrate that really is really good. Okay. So yes, what, what I would suggest is that build it incrementally. You start, you said, okay, here are the five fun projects that you can do, and for that you have this, you, you, you get the kit, and you get that. And then like that, after people can have fun. I would like to buy one for my kids, but you know, I don't know what I can tell them to do with that. No, 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 we, we, we haven't exercises. We, we will make exercises, a, a curriculum, Real, uh, related to uh, Argentinian uh, technology and uh, technology education in, in the class, no? There, but is, there is some people that uh, already use physical toys with kids, uh, and maybe you can ask them for their opinion, no? I think. For example, in yes. North Carolina. In Yes, yes. We okay. Okay, yes, we should. Yes, <laughs> three months. Well, three months, okay. <laughs> Um, so, very cool presentation. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, I have a question for, for the rest of us. Um, the, the thing is, um, we would love to have that in eToys, for example, but uh, the problem that I see is that actually taking this code and including it in the eToys image is currently the only way to deploy it. Um, we have several um, groups around the world, uh, around the world, who do stuff like this, or take Dr. Geo, uh, that's an add-on to eToys or other packages. And uh, the only way to distribute that to others is by building a new image and building a new application and doing that. Now, what I, I would like to see is some kind of, I don't know, uh, binary packages, plugins, whatever, um, that we can take a little package and load it into, the, into that image 
um, as an add-on at runtime. So we do not want to compile code, it takes way too long, um, but just load some binary bytecode, maybe, uh, into the image um, to extend an existing application. Um, so if anybody would have ideas how to do that, or even better, work on it, get a grad student, um, that would be cool. So image segment technology is maybe uh, the way to do it. Hmm? <laughs> okay, another question. Thank you, Bert. Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding Arduino. Uh, did you implement a sketch in Arduino for the communication protocol? Between Smalltalk and Arduino? Oh, we didn't, we never, no, didn't talk about that. Uh, to communicate with the Arduino, we use Infirmata, uh, which is already open source and is there and it works very, very well. Uh, uh, we only did the client implementation in, in Squeak and the fir we installed the latest Firmata on the, on the Arduino and it, and it works. Uh, How it's called? Firmata? Firmata, uh, well, it's a firmware. Yes, and it's it's very cool. Firmata, no, Firmata, no. There. Okay. Uh, I know some uh, people in here in City Lab uh, made the connection to Arduino with with Scratch, and they implemented a, a new firmware instead of Firmata. We choose you use Firmata because uh, it's what the community uses. So we don't want to, uh, but uh, and it was already done. So. Can I upload it uh, to, to Arduino directly from Smalltalk, or do I have to use Arduino to upload it? I sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear. Can you upload the microcontroller directly from Smalltalk, or do I no? Have we currently, you have Arduino installed on the installed on the microcontroller, and you communicate using serial the serial port to the to the yeah, send direct commands to the. We are working actually in compiling Smalltalk code into the Arduino, but it's very, very, it's green, let's say. Uh, I haven't got time to, to do it, and it's not usable yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.